In 1942, 80 years ago, I took $114.75, every penny I'd say, and I bought three shares of City Service Preferred. The investment that Warren Buffett is talking about here was his first of many. That led him in 2008 to become the richest man in the world. His journey that started over 80 years ago has now led him to a net worth of $102 billion. We have closely studied his career and investments over the years and have come up with a four-part blueprint that has led to his success. A blueprint that led this man to become the world's greatest investor. And it starts with part one. Only buy stocks and businesses you understand. Now the title of this part may be an obvious one for you. After all, it makes perfect sense. However, for countless years, individuals have tended to purchase stocks and businesses that are far beyond their comprehension. This tendency arguably reached its peak in 2020 and 2021. Famous investor Peter Lynch would often tell a story about a person who, after hearing a stock tip on the bus on the way to work, would quickly invest a big chunk of his savings without much thought. Often the outcome was a rapid decline in the stock's price leading to a panicked sell-off, primarily because of the investor's ignorance about the business. Now swap hearing these tips on the bus with the internet, and the story becomes a perfect reflection of what transpired in 2020 and 2021. Numerous people, prompted by suggestions on the internet and platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit, acquired stocks without possessing the faintest idea about the businesses behind them. This reckless investment in unfamiliar entities is possibly one of the quickest routes to significant losses in the stock market. Here is where Warren Buffett's principle of the circle of competence comes into play. The concept, as originally outlined by Buffett in his 1996 shareholder letter, encourages investors to limit their investments to businesses they thoroughly understand. This concept is explained extremely well in this clip of Warren here. It is a question of being self-realistic. And that applies outside of business as well. Uh, being uh, realistic in appraising your own talents and shortcomings, I think. I don't know whether that's innate, but some people seem a whole lot better than it. the others. I'll tell you the best way to uh, develop a great sense of that about yourself. You might get some of your friends that know you well to offer contributions. Notice that this video highlights Warren's belief that successful investors only act when an opportunity lies squarely within their circle of competence, but when it does, to act decisively. This nicely leads us to part two of our blueprint, time arbitrage. At only 11 years old, young Warren Buffett was not like most kids his age who spent their time playing outdoors. Instead, Buffett had already found his life's passion, investing. With the enthusiasm of a young investor, Buffett made his first investment, six shares of a stock named City Service, at $38 per share. Unfortunately, soon after his purchase, the price of the stock dropped to $27 per share. The young Warren, who had convinced his sister to invest alongside him, found himself anxious as the stock's value diminished. Eventually, the price recovered, and Warren sold his shares for $40 each, making a small profit. His joy was short-lived, however, as the stock's price shot up to $200 per share not long after. This experience taught Buffett an invaluable lesson about overlooking short-term market fluctuations and focusing on the long-term growth. In fact, Buffett took this lesson to heart. Just look at the longevity of some of his most successful investments. He first bought Apple in 2016. Shares in the railroad company BNSF were first purchased in 2007. American Express made its entry into the portfolio in 1993, Coca-Cola since 1988. And then there's Geico, an insurance company that Berkshire now owns entirely, but whose stocks Buffett personally began buying as far back as 1951. Most investors typically measure their holding periods in weeks or months, whereas Buffett's investment timeline is measured in years and decades. This approach allows him to leverage a strategy known as time arbitrage, a way for an individual investor to outperform a professional investor. Beating a professional investor can also be done by following part three, buying during price declines. Many consider market downturns as negative, but Warren Buffett argues otherwise. 
Anytime stocks go down, as far as I'm concerned, I like it because I'm a net buyer of stocks. I'm, I've been buying stocks ever since I was 11 years old. So uh, when stocks go down, it's good news. Just like when hamburgers go down, it's good news. Or Coca-Cola <laughs> goes down, it's good news in terms of anything I buy. Uh, but, you know, stocks are going to go down. You could probably look it up as to what percent of the days, of the, you know, since I was born, they've gone down and maybe it'd be uh, 30% or something like that. And uh, you, you can't predict what stocks will do but in, in the short run, but you can predict that American business will do well over time. Here, during the interview we just watched, Buffett explained that if you're still in the phase of life where you're saving and investing, you should welcome falling stock prices. The net buyers he refers to are investors who purchase more stocks than they sell. If you're watching this, you likely fall into this category and should therefore be enthusiastic about market downturns. As stock prices fall, each dollar you invest yields a greater ownership piece of the company. Conversely, as stock prices rise, every dollar spent buys a smaller stake. This is why he suggests that investors with plenty of saving and investing ahead should not be thrilled when the stock market surges. Once you grasp this basic math, you can confidently view a falling stock market as a ripe buying opportunity and not something to be scared of. Remember the classic quote from Warren, be fearful when others are greedy, be greedy when others are fearful. And that leads us on to the final part of the blueprint, the principle of ignoring economic predictions. If you search 2023 recession on Google or YouTube, you'll be swamped with numerous articles and videos predicting a massive economic downturn. While it's human nature to want to accurately predict such events to optimize investment returns, Buffett argues that incorporating economic predictions into your investment strategy is misguided. In fact, during the 2015 Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting, Warren stated that any company that employs an economist has one employee too many. He explains this perspective by outlining a two-step test. For information to influence an investment decision, it must be both important and knowable. Economic predictions certainly fulfill the first criterion. They are important. The economy undeniably influences stock prices. For example, the S&P 500 peaked at over 1,500 in fall 2007, before the Great Recession led to a decline of over 50%. So even Buffett would agree that the economy plays a crucial role in investing. However, where economic predictions fall short is in the second criterion, knowability. Despite numerous claims to the contrary, Buffett consistently maintains that he knows of no one who can accurately and reliably predict the economy. Because the future of the economy is unknowable, economic predictions do not pass the second part of Buffett's test. As a result, he advises against incorporating these predictions into investment decision-making. And there you have it, the definitive blueprint to investing success. Make sure to subscribe and support the channel if you found this useful, and we'll see you in the next video.